And we are live. Welcome back, folks. It is Wednesday, the 9th of September. Boy, we're heading into fall already. Didn't even feel like we even had a summer. I guess everything seems so out of whack due to COVID. But anyways, I hope everybody is safe and doing fine. Uh, tonight, we're going to tackle that big, bold question that seems to be always coming through, at least in the Facebook groups, about just how good can you get naturally. We'll be back in a moment, and we're going to tackle this head on. Welcome back. Um, I'll introduce myself again. My name is Perry Larrabee, and this is The Way It Is Naturally. This is a all-natural platform. I preach natural bodybuilding, natural fitness, natural diet approaches, uh, completely natural. Um, I get into some fairly heated discussions with individuals who uh, don't appreciate that in some of the groups, but that's unfortunate because I like to be the voice that speaks out for those that actually put in the work and put in the time. Uh, earn the right to call themselves bodybuilders and don't stick needles in their asses and swallow pills to get where they're at. I know that'll cause a few flare-ups just by saying that, but that's okay because that's what needs to be done here. There's too many people uh, really making a mockery of uh, this sport that I've loved and that I've loved and that I've loved for over 40 years. I still go out hard, still out-train most of the young kids in there. And uh, because I've done it naturally. And uh, there are many people out there that do it the same way. And uh, maybe they're not as vocal. But um, anyways, I guess the point here is tonight's discussion, it's not so much to create a war, but it's to really set the groundwork and, and show people and demonstrate to people what you can actually do as a natural, as opposed to what people say that you can do as a natural. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, you can tell that uh, I'm not, I'm not overly pleased with what happens when I go into these, main, mainly these Facebook groups that are posting pictures. It doesn't matter. It could be men. It could be women, uh, older men, older women. It doesn't matter. And so many of them all using drugs. It doesn't matter what age they are. They can, be, they can be 14 years old. They can be 65 years old. They're still using drugs. And it's, absolutely, it's absolute stupidity. First of all, why is it stupidity? Because un, as a, unfortunately, Compared to what your buddies in the gym are telling you, uh, I have a degree in lab medicine to go along with my 43 years of training and training clients. Let me tell you, the second you start using drugs, you're altering your body chemistry and not in a good way and in many ways irreparably. And that is a fact, whether they want to tell you that or not. Not only then to mention that, the stupidity of actually doing that, 99% uh, of people are not even ever going to get on a stage, so taking all that risk for nothing. What? Because they're so vain or they're so insecure, so people will notice them. That's what it's all about. That's what you see in the Facebook groups. It's, hey, look at me. Hey, evaluate me. Hey, see me. I started training years and years ago, and I could give a damn whether someone even noticed or not. You know, that just, that just came, with, uh, came, with, came with the game. But I could care less. It hardly was the motivation. And that's the reason why so many people come and go in this sport. Because you're in it for the wrong reasons. And as soon as you make those changes or you have to make those changes, be it because you can't take anything anymore, you can't afford to take anything anymore, either way, you stop training. 99.9% .9 of you will stop training and will never train again because it just will not feel the same. You go on drugs for two, three, four years or more. You know, if you're lucky that nothing significant happens right away, but many people who thought nothing significant happens to them, turned up dead by the time they were age 40 years old. And there are countless thousands of people that are in that bracket, just so you know. But anyways, let's just talk about natural potential. How you determine it, you know, what is reality? What is, you know, what is complete? 
fallacy. Okay, so there are many factors that are going to determine just how far somebody can get in the, in the field of bodybuilding or fitness world. Or, but many of the physiques that I see that's posted in these groups, many of them are not even, they're not even nice physiques. They're not tremendously developed, yet they're using drugs to get to even to that point, which is sad because those results are easily obtainable with, uh, with more time put in, more time and more dedication. So what are those factors? Well, I'll start off with, although I don't like to lean on genetics as much as many people do, they always talk. They say, well, you know, if you took drugs out of sport, you know, those people, to, those genetics would be, still be the superior. Uh, but the reality is that's not necessarily true because the people who actually win, whether it be competitions, I don't necessarily mean bodybuilding and fitness, could be track and field, could be every sport is inundated with drugs now. Football, baseball, hockey, uh, ping pong, everything. There's a drug for anything that'll, that'll help you improve in, in certain sports. Uh, there's drugs out there that they can actually use. You only have to touch your weight and you actually can develop some lean muscle mass. That's a fact too, for those people who don't believe that. Anyways, point being, if you took genetics, you know, they want to say that you know, those genetically gifted would always reign supreme. The thing is, many people who have you know, so-called, you know, perfect genetics or great genetics have no heart. They have no desire. Uh, they can't put it all together and never will. Whereas you take the, you know, the guy or the girl that may come second, third, fourth, or fifth, but they got, you know, the heart of a lion, they will win every time. They will win every time because they will go the extra mile. They will do everything right. They'll put in the time. They won't skip workouts. They won't bitch and complain about, you know, why things didn't go well or make excuses for themselves. They'll just go out there and get it done. So that's why genetics is not the be-all and end-all of determining just how far you can go naturally. Uh, it takes a lot more than that. So keep, keeping that in mind, if you want to maximize, you know, well, let's, let's just talk strictly bodybuilding now. Bodybuilding, physique building, fitness, they all tie together. Let's just talk strictly that for now, okay? If you want to maximize your potential as a natural, without any doubt, you need to do things that much better than a non-natural athlete. That's the reality. You know, if you take, you know, a natural versus a non-natural, and, you know, both of them, you know, maybe skip some workouts here, their, their diet isn't the best, uh, you know, their mental attitude towards their training is not the best. The person taking drugs is going to reign supreme every time. But if you're that person who is natural and wants to be natural and is okay, okay with being natural and taking more time, you can attain an incredible physique. And I don't mean just a good physique. I mean an incredible physique but it's going to take a lot of years. It's not going to take days and months. That's the whole problem I see when I look at people's comments. Oh, I've been training for four months, and you know, I, this is all I this is all I've achieved. You know, what should I what should I take? You know, to fix this. A few months. My word, you don't even. People are so much in a hurry these days. They have they don't give a damn about how they get to anything anymore. All they care about is the end result. And that's why you see so much depression, so much anxiety, so much uh, contentment, a lack of contentment. It's because they're just looking for that next thrill. They're not even enjoying the journey along the way. They're not appreciating all the gains, all the small gains that add up to the big gain in the end. And that's the problem. You know, if you're just going to do it for the end result, you will not be in this game. I don't care whether you use drugs or not. You will not be in this game for for life and you will be one of those people as i as i always mention to uh people who want to get into little debates there in, in facebook groups you're going to be that 40 year old guy sitting there sitting on his chair with his 40 inch waistline eating cheetos out of his belly button because you will not be in the gym because you either can't go back on drugs because you can't afford it or they screwed you up so badly and this goes for both men and women and uh, and you just it's because it's too much hard work you're used to the easy way. And for those people that say, well, you know, 
the people, I, I heard one person today, Mash Beck, he was actually having a rebuttal with me talking about how the people that he knows in the gym who train, use drugs train are harder than, than everybody else. And that's a load of shit because the fact is when you're using drugs, you do not have to go all out. And most people do not go all out. And that's why they use them. It's the lazy person's way to get there. Okay. So point being, if you want to maximize your potential as a natural You've got to do things better than the non-natural. If you don't, you are not going to win or you are not going to achieve your maximum potential. You've got to put in the effort. You've got to not make excuses for yourself and realize that this is a lifelong game. Why shouldn't it be a lifelong game? This is not, you know, make it a lifestyle. Make it something pleasurable. If you're one of these people that is always dreading going to the gym, that means you're going to the you're going to the gym only because you have to, or because you know without it people won't notice you or they won't recognize you or whatever the case might be. That's 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 not a it's not a great attitude to have. <clears throat> if you'd rather turn around and waste your physique and, and damage your body just because of who's going to notice you. Uh, for a few years at most, maybe only for a few months, maybe for a few minutes. Some people are doing all this for their, if they're lucky, 15 minutes of fame. What is so hard to understand is you put yourselves through so much stress, uh, put your body through so many, uh, so many potentially dangerous situations, and you won't even get on stage to actually, you know, put it to the test. It's just so you can go to the bar and, and or look good in your bathing suit in the summertime or, or on, on vacation. These are all absolutely stupid reasons to be taking drugs and train. You need to be training for the right reasons. And if you train for those right reasons, you're going to develop an all-around, not just a wonderful physique, you're going to develop an all-around, you know, complete um, approach to life. You'll, you'll be able to get more focused with, uh, with your aspirations and your career, uh, your education, uh, you know, just <clears throat> how, you, uh, how you actually integrate in your social circles. There's so many things that will improve if you approach this in the right way. So how good can you get? <clears throat> well, I can tell you right now, I've seen many physiques where I'm, I'm on the fence about, you know, whether I think they're natural or not. And I'm not talking about Joe, you know, people always say, well, who wants to go see, you know, those skinny little bone racks at these natural shows? The problem is, folks, not enough people stick around the sport long enough. They either get out or they turn to drugs. So you don't have people out there. You know, they're very, it's very rare to have people who have been out there training 15, 20, 25 years consistently, training hard, trying to improve themselves. On it. It's a rare thing. I have 43 years in, and I've been through medical trauma like you wouldn't believe, and I'm going to get back on the stage again. That's the difference. That's, that's a rare breed, and that's, but that's what it takes because in reality, there is no such thing as attaining your complete potential in your lifetime. Why do I say that? I say that because this is, these are known facts. The human, a human being uses almost a very only minute portion of their actual brain's potential. And if you know anything about uh, my teachings and my, and my book that's coming out, it has to deal with the, the, with the cornerstones of natural training and natural bodybuilding. And within those cornerstones, the psychological approach is the actual, the most important stone in that, in that building process. Without that, you will never, doesn't matter how hard, you know, how you train, because you're never going to be training hard enough because psychologically you haven't approached it properly. And it doesn't matter how well you eat, because if you haven't trained 100%, because you're not into it 100% uh, psychologically, therefore it doesn't matter how well you eat. Can you make progress and can you get better? Of course you can. But if you want to say, I've reached my genetic potential, that's not going to happen in this lifetime. Maybe there's people out there that are sitting there going, well, why am I doing this then? But that's the beauty of this. You, that's something to look forward to. You get your whole life now to continually get better. 
if you want to stick with this, you can continually get better right into your old age. At some point, at some point, you know, it's going to start to go downhill. But I'm talking like in your 70s, 80s, and even then. I mean, I see people that haven't actually gone all out in their training over all the years, and they're in their 70s, and they still have a, a very solid physique, far better than most 20-year-olds, you know. But, you know, at some point, you're going to get, a, you know, your body is going to break down. That's a natural process. God gave you this body. Yes, God gave you this body. And I'm proud to say that I am a Christian, and I speak from a Christian point of view. Not just a natural, natural bodybuilder. I'm a Christian, and I believe that when you're given this gift, which is your body, you don't abuse it by putting poison and crap into it, okay? So my point here is you're given this body, and eventually – the physical body will break down. But that's not, that is so far down the road. Most people will, you know, something other will happen in their lifetime. And before they've even used up their, their, their entire mortal physical body, you know, they will pass away probably from one thing or another. Sadly, it's because of mostly what we brought on to our, by ourselves. You know, how we produce our foods, things like that. These are all contributing, you know, to the, the, the sad state of our, of our medical, uh, our medical condition in most people's cases, you know, we're just completely out of control. We're out of control about the food we eat, when we eat it, the type of food, where we get it, how it's grown. We brought it on ourselves, folks. All you can do is minimize the impact of that as you can. So getting back to my, you know, I'm talking about genetic potential or uh, potential of how, how good you can get. So with that statement said, that really nullifies all the other arguments in and itself, let, let alone the other things I'm going to get into. I know, body, I know bodybuilders that say, well, you know, I literally, this is laughable. Well, I trained for five or six years. I got, you know, I got as good as I was going to get, and that's why I went on drugs. Five or six years. You haven't even developed intuition in your body in five or six years. I don't care how that you're not going to find anybody any more dedicated and driven than I was or several of the guys that I trained with when we started. You know, we read, we read nutritional almanacs in every magazine to get a hold of. That was our entertainment. It wasn't going out and, you know, we didn't, none of us were rich. We didn't go out and uh, play on the internet all day because there was no internet. You know, this is what we did. We were obsessed with the sport. And I got to tell you that in five years, you do not even come close to understanding your body. I'm 60 years old, and I can tell you right now, I still do little tests with myself, and I find out because as you change, you know, through your teens and through your 20s and through your 30s, your body changes. So therefore, what you may have thought was the be-all and end-all at 20-some is something completely different by the time you get into 30-some and 40-some and 50-some. I've proven it. When I got on, I got on stage at age 35, I, I hadn't been on stage in eight years. I changed my training completely around. I only used four months or four months or six months to prep for the show. I changed completely over to HIT training or HIT training, and I won the show completely natural. That was at 35 years of age. Anyways. Give me a second there, folks. Hold on. Just I need to mute my mic there just for a second. Sorry about that, folks. Anyways, uh, yeah. So it will take you your lifetime, which is a good thing. It'll take your lifetime to learn about your body. And that's that's a beautiful thing. It's something to look forward to. You know, you get up every day and it's like you can be creating these little experiments with yourselves, you know, you know, how the, how these calories are working on you, how these macros are working, you know, how this style of training is, you know, you change things up and, you know, different, different set and rep combinations. That's the beauty of this sport. When you truly love this sport and for those that really embraced it, you're going to have a far better chance of reaching as close to your maximum potential as possible rather than the other people. And the ones that I, I pity the people, and there are many of them. You may not, you know, there's a lot of you sitting there and they're only going to believe that, but there are people trying to influence kids the second they step into a gym. I know of people approaching 14 and 15 year olds. You know, 
getting them on juice of some form or another right off the bat. You know what it all comes down to? It comes down to money. Greed and money. That's what it is, folks. Somebody's out there trying to make bucks. They don't give a damn who it harms, what happens, as long as they're making money. And this goes up the line right into who produces the shows. And that's why you don't think a natural bodybuilding could be being held on a bigger stage if somebody really wanted to. It's being held back on purpose because everybody can make so much more money, they think, by, you know, producing these freaks. And they are freaks. They're not, they're not beautiful physiques whatsoever. Uh, you know, the days of beautiful physiques are long gone. You know, you can go on, on the Olympia stage, and other than a big a bit of height difference, every one of those physiques look the same. They all look puffy. They all look soft. They all look bloated. They do not look like hard granite. They do not look shapely, and they're not, they're not symmetrical. There's, there's so many problems with the physiques these days. So how big can you get? You can, I mean, it's no use me, you know, quoting numbers on arms and legs. I mean, that's very, first of all, it's very juvenile. What I'm trying to say is if someone was willing to put in, I would, let's say, 20 years, even 20 years of steady, hard, and when I say heavy lifting, I don't mean heavy lifting at the expense of everything else. I mean the type of lifting where you're challenging yourself to be stronger in good form. You know, using proper techniques and proper approaches and proper mental approaches to get there. If you're willing to do that, I guarantee you, you, you would see so many mind-blowing physiques that nobody would believe is natural. But that's why when, you know, and, and what saddens, what makes the situation even worse is there's 99.9% .9 of the people out there, they're all claiming natural and they're, and they're all fake naturals. People that I know for a fact, I mean, I'm not stupid. And, you know, they're not kidding anybody else, but all they have to do is kid a few people and they can make money off them. And that's what they do. YouTube is full of them. Facebook is full of them. Oh, you know, I saw one guy the other day, you know, 15 years, completely natural. I'm looking at, I can tell the difference between a natural and, not, and a non-natural muscle. Not the same thing whatsoever. And it's not even that he had a great physique. He had a terrible physique. It was ugly. It wasn't even super big. It was unsymmetrical. It, it was unbalanced. Uh, no tremendous size. Certainly nothing you couldn't attain all in your own uh, naturally. The thing is, it's going to take you more time. And that's the biggest factor when, you know, when you're determining who's natural, who's not. Sorry, folks. You're 20 years old with a set of 20-inch ripped arms. You're not natural. I don't give a damn how much you try and tell me you are. You're not. Okay. And uh, that's the end of that discussion. So what do you do to, you know, bring up the natural platform? Well, you do what I'm doing. I wish there was more people out there. You know, go out there and push the natural trip, push natural training, support it. You know, show people how to train properly. So many people have no clue. I listen to these groups and I listen to people you know, and it's just full of, you know, other drug people telling drug people how to train. None of them know how to train because they haven't put in any time because that comes with time. Learning and becoming good at that is like anything else. It takes time. You don't become a great welder overnight. You don't become a great doctor overnight. You don't become a great da 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 da, -da overnight. It takes time. It takes repetition. It takes practice. Okay? So you have to hone your craft. And if you're being led astray right from square one, you're never going to learn the proper way. And like I said, most of you are going to fall by the wayside anyways. You think that, you know, that little bit of notice that you get right now, do you think anybody's even going to remember you? You know who they're going to remember? They're going to remember guys like me. They're going to remember guys like me that fought the fight, that got out there and put their money where their mouth is, demonstrated not only that they, they can train, out-train most of the people that are using drugs, they can, also, they can also talk about it in an intellectual way that makes sense. Whereas when I have these discussions with these individuals in these groups, it saddens me so much because most of them can't get through a sentence without hurling four-letter words at me. That's the extent of their verbiage. Their verbiage is only second to their ignorance in the sport. And that's a fact. 
So it's very tough to go into, into these venues, for lack of a better word, and try to make a difference. And people will say, well, well why don't you just stick to your own, you know, that's why I get a lot of it. Why don't you just, you know, stick to your own groups, you know, go preach to, to the other, you know, your other Christian buddies and, uh, or, you know, stop making, stop being such a hater. That's a key word that I love to use. You're a hater because you're, you're pointing out the fact that these people are just cheaters. That's all they are. Well, here's my point. As a Christian, I'm not supposed to be, I don't, I don't need to go into a Christian group, even though I'm in there as well. They're not the people that need help. I rather wade into that cesspool, which is what I go, I go into every day. I go into a cesspool of people with, with either lack of knowledge or, you know, had the misfortune to come across people that led them astray down the wrong path. And they think that they're actually not putting themselves at risk. And they think what they're doing is okay. Most of them don't even acknowledge the fact that what they're doing is illegal. Do you know that? It's illegal. I don't know why that escapes people's mind. It is illegal. These are prescription drugs. And any doctor, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, if I, if anybody that, and I have seen them, people out there just openly calling people to their, to, to, you know, contact them this way and uh, they'll get them set up with some gear. I report these people. Why do I do that? Because it's illegal and I'm tired of the crap and the junk that's out there. So where can you go as a potential, as a natural? You can compete right up and I believe you can compete right up into the national level. I don't believe that you would have, even though you wouldn't, you wouldn't get laughed off the stage, I just don't think you're going to be able to be big enough and hard enough to compete against people that are using such, you know, such intense drugs like uh, Trenbolone and, uh, and uh, certain diuretics and, and cutting agents. Uh, you know, you, there's just certain limitations. You, know, you can build, uh, some people will be able to build almost as big a physique and with nice proportions and everything else, but they're not going to get that same hardness. They're not going to be soft like a donut. Half the guys that are going to Olympia screw it up in the last few days, and they look soft and spongy themselves. So there's no big difference there. Okay. My point being, there's going to be a point where you can't beat them. I hate to even say that, but it is the reality. Point where you can't beat them. But 95% of that population, you'll be better than them. You think those those kids that are training now? You think they're even going to be around if you're uh, out somewhere? You think you think if you put in twenty or thirty years of training, and you have always done it the right way, you're still going to have your great physique. And those other people, millions of them, literally, not just thousands, millions of them, nobody's even going to know who they are. Who is that? Oh, that guy's got a spare tire around his waist. Oh well, he used to be. Uh, you know, I used to remember his physique on that show, and or he was on YouTube and. That. Yeah, well, it doesn't look like much of a bodybuilder anymore or her, you know, look at her waistline. Whereas, you know, just that, you know, that wonderful woman who appreciated her, her body and took care of it and looked wonderful and very beautiful and very sensual, you know, she'll still look like that because she took care of herself. So my point here is most people will never reach their genetic potential and therefore there's no reason to go to drugs. I listened to uh, a video by Greg Doucette, who I don't have a whole lot of respect for when it comes to his, uh, his approaches. Uh, you know, he's basically a drug guru. Uh, and he mentioned in one of his videos how he had trained for 10 years naturally. Well, first of all, I'm not so sure if he actually put in 10 years, but even if he did, if he actually thought that that was the end of his potential, that tells me they really didn't train very hard. And just because you're strong and who knows how strong he was naturally. I mean, you know, he shows strength demonstrations when he's on drugs, and that's fine. But when he talks about, you know, his, his eating approach, and, you know, these are all things that, you know, as a natural, you can never do and, change and attain the same result, which is my last thing that I want to make note of here, people. Don't take your direction from people who aren't naturals. How can they ever give you direction if they don't even go the same route? Uh, there's another gentleman here that actually, uh, Jeff Nippert does some, uh, does some, uh, videos with him. Saddens me very much because to me that takes away from Jeff, Jeff Nippert's credibility as a natural. And this is the other gentleman, uh, you know, God bless him. Uh, you know, he seems like a nice individual, but sorry, you're not in any position, any position to tell people how to train naturally.